Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. And I'm just gonna manually uh, bring the cutter down to here and then just cut all the way through and just keep feeding until yeah, somewhere around here probably uh, the aluminium will come onto there and hopefully stall the spindle and trigger the e-stop. This is my DIY CNC machine. Pretty good, but could it be improved? Oh, here we go. What? So I 3D printed a new housing, uh, but the seal paths weren't really deep enough, so they weren't really holding the seal in. So in the end, I just used super glue just to hold them in and make sure the whole thing was gonna fit. Then I put some heat set inserts into the end so that I could screw the, the lid on. Then I thought, well, we might as well make another one. So I updated the design to have deeper seal paths and some other very minor changes, and then I 3D printed another one. And here it is. So the seals now just push straight in and they hold themselves, so that's quite nice. I haven't even glued the ends together. I think that'll be okay for testing at least. And then there's some of the minor changes I made in there. And it's looking pretty good. So I've just soldered on the board again onto these wires because we've now got the lid incorporated. And this is a PG7 uh, or, or cable relief. And you see I've just got that in there. So that will be the lid. That'll screw on there and the whole thing will go together. So I think the next thing to do is get this board in there, get the lid screwed on and then get it over to the machine. Uh, I did have it installed, but it's not working. So we'll strip it back down, figure out what's happened. Okay, long story short there, for some reason, this didn't work. It was really temperamental. The signal wasn't very good at all. So what I ended up doing is just filing that where the infrared send and receive come out just to try and get the LEDs a bit closer to the reflective surface. But for whatever reason, um, this very minor design change somewhere in there has caused that just not quite to trigger very reliably. Um, and I was able to test it by getting this chrome bar that's basically similar to diameter to the spindle and then just putting it in there and moving it around. Basically, if you were at the far side like that, it was okay, but as soon as you got into the middle, it stopped working, and obviously there it didn't work at all. So it was something to do with the distance from there and maybe um, how far back the LEDs were, because I think when you push the circuit board in, they kind of sit a bit randomly, depending on how the legs bend and so on, where they end up. So um, with a bit of experimentation on that, I ended up printing another one, which is in the spindle now, and basically this hole is a lot larger, probably another two or three millimeters on the diameter and that meant it was much further back here and the LEDs were effectively much closer to that and then that meant um, oh yeah I've got the the center on there but while I was doing this I wondered if some of the light was bouncing it up and it wasn't uh, shutting it off properly so I had different depths of this side wall here so I had that depth there and so that was the original one there so it looks very similar to before, but there's a much bigger hole in there. And then the sensor disc is a different design. It's a bit narrower. It's got um, on these side bits here, these are currently 90 degrees to that base, but on that one, they're angled in a bit. So when the LED shines on this, um, it's not angled straight back. It's actually angled down and that's stopping some of the light going up and hitting on the, the locking nut that's kind of silver and reflective. Cause obviously I want this to be you know, as dark as possible. So it's got some, minor tweaks in it this little hat's a little bit smaller and a few other things it's obviously got a, a different thickness here as well to take up the extra gap anyway when you run it it looks like this so blues the input or the output from the sensor and then yellow okay, so that's the sensor and then yellow is out the back of the op amp so that's nice and clean and that's 3.3 volts so we're getting a nice trigger the trigger point's probably about here somewhere and it's absolutely perfect, up to 24,000 RPM. So it tracks it perfectly.
Yeah, you probably noticed there when that was at 24,000, that was at 23,100. I think there's something in the code that uh, just stops it going to the full PWM, you know, 100% duty cycle. I seem to have been putting that in. Um, I can't remember why now, but anyway, uh, maybe I could play, mess around with that. But it's now working again and it's a lot more reliable. Yeah, it's pretty robust now with this iteration. Okay, I think it's about time we tried this thing out. So I've got the sensor hooked up there and then I've got the wire running through there and then through the drag chains and then I've got it hooked up to a little microprocessor. And then down here you can see I've got a little bit of a thousand grade, that really gummy aluminium just screwed down to a scrap bit of MDF. So it's time to see if it's gonna work. Okay, I've also got the e-stop wired in from the control unit into the main panel. So if it decides to e-stop, it will actually stop the machine. Question is, will it do that? So I've just made a few more changes to the program, just fine tuned it so it's a bit more sensitive. And uh, let's give it a dry run and see if I can install the spindle and see if it will trigger an e-stop. So I'll just alt it up. Tracks nicely. Go about 1400 rpm and then I can't find my glove so I'm just going to use a little bit of shock towel wrap that around the spindle and try and stall it okay three two one go I think it actually worked so the whole machine stopped here um, it won't even yeah, nothing will work Let's just reset it. We should be ready to go again. Okay. Okay, I've just made this little cutaway model, just so you can see what's going on, and also allow me to fine tune the exact height of this so that it's just touching the lockout nut at the bottom there. just about yeah get the 13 mil spanner on to change the end mills in the collet okay the moment we've all been waiting for so i've got a six mil two flute carbide end mill in there it's a pretty old one so i don't mind if i actually break it and then i've got my thousand grade aluminium this is the really gummy stuff and i'm just going to manually uh, bring the cutter down to here and then just cut all the way through and just keep feeding until yeah, somewhere around here probably uh, the aluminium will come onto there and hopefully stall the spindle and trigger the e-stop. Fingers crossed. So here we go. A bit nerve-wracking but it worked um, maybe it could come in a little bit quicker but we didn't break the end mill and it did actually stop as you can see the whole thing's tripped out the machine uh, the software and the spindle as well so it did actually work uh, for just a split second there I thought it was gonna break it but it did actually stop in time so I think on the software I probably need a little bit more tuning just so it goes a little bit quicker but it's actually working yay now that was without any mist coolant or anything like that uh, but it's kind of worst case scenario but it did actually work okay excellent so where do we go from here so I think I want to fine-tune the software a little bit so that it cuts in a bit quicker I thought it was gonna break the end mill but it did actually stop um, and then looking forward into the future so I want to make this open source so I'll put the 3D printed files somewhere so people can download uh, either the raw files or the STLs or maybe both and then you can actually evolve the design a bit yourself. That will be for the main sensor housing and the sensor. Uh, also put the 3D printed files available for this little box and then the little controls as well. 
the Gerber files for making the control panel and the main ECU in there, or my controller board. So you can send off and make your own board, you know, with list of components, that kind of thing. Basically, open source the whole thing, and then what am I missing? All the software. So I guess it makes sense to upload that to something like GitHub. Now, I've downloaded stuff from GitHub before on the Cloud42 um, Electronic Leads Group project, but I've never uploaded or, you know, been an author. Um, I kind of roughly know how it works, but I'm not an expert um, in terms of people can branch off, make their own versions, and then merge it back into the main branch, something like that. Um, do leave me some comments down below. What's the best way to open source the whole thing? Software, files for the PCB, and files for the 3D printed parts as well. And then in a future video, I'll figure out where I'm going to put all that and then put all that in the video as well so people can uh, play along at home. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you're interested in following along, feel free to subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment, especially about how, you know, how to go about open sourcing the whole thing, just so anyone can have a play. And with that being said, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.